Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Williams, Jr. And I'm First Lady Mark Burrell Williams. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we invite you to watch our sermons and Bible studies, that it may be uplifting to you. And please visit our website, gbwtalpn.org. And remember, we, we love, love you in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Praise the Lord, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, here in Greater Bible Way Temple of Albion, the shepherd's place where God is doing miracles. First, I would like to congratulate those individuals of the Northern District Council. Our new chairman will be Southern Bishop Fionn Wiggins, um, and our new youth president will be Elder Demetrius Phillips. Our Christian education president will be Pastor Ivan Elam. Um, and I believe the rest of the the, um, the rest of the uh, elections, uh, the officers will stay pretty much the same. <clears throat> also, I would like um, to state um, our stance concerning the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Uh, what people don't understand that Roe v. Wade, the federal um, law of permitting abortion to be legal. Um, one, the Bible says the first commandment is given, thou shalt not kill. That's a commandment. Two, Roe v. Wade was a black man was accused of raping a white female. The white lady that was on the opposite of this case on her deathbed, there's a 60 clip video, 60 minute video, stating that she lied on the black. So this is what the Supreme, it went all the way to the Supreme Court. And that's what the Supreme Court Use to legalize family abortion. This does not mean that abortion is abolished in this country. It means that simply they send it back to the states to make a decision. So we should not be getting caught up in the world and all this foolishness because we are Bible-based church. We believe in the Bible. And I do believe in women having choice concerning their body. But before you get to that, the conception, please understand that you should not be having unprotected sex, Amen. especially before marriage. Amen. Abortion is used in this case, pre-marriage relationship, or when particularly the man or woman has a fear outside of the marriage. And then they use this. So if eyes is used negatively. But nevertheless, the ruling of the land has made their stance. We need to maintain, whether if you're left, right, Democrat, Republican, Independent, we need to remain on God's side. They're going to change laws, make laws all day. That's what they're paid to do. But we should not feed into it necessarily concerning our salvation. Amen? Amen. We should live saved in the church Amen. and we should live saved out of the church. Amen. My last statement before I call on the portion of the praise team to come here Amen. and sing. My last statement is concerning the 107 year law that's been on the books for New York concerning gun laws, gun laws to carry. The Supreme Court overturned 107 years that there is no uh, prejudice concerning those individuals to carry in New York, which will also affect California. California and the state of New York are two of the most strong having laws concerning carrying a gun. We should be smart enough to know that the gun is not who kills, it's the person behind the gun Amen. that kills. Amen. And while we try to say nobody should be carrying a gun, let us remember scripturally 
the disciples, it was when Jesus had swords. They had swords. Today's modern day physical sword is a gun. The spiritual sword is the Bible. But the modern day sword according to the scriptures is a gun. And I'm not telling you to go run out and get one because you may not be there when you can handle one. Because when you get mad, you may want to start using it negatively. So you may not be in a place. But once again, we need to follow the word of God. The world is going to make their laws. This is our law. The Bible, this is what we must follow. So let's not get mixed into the agenda of the world because the devil, he rules in division and separation. God rules in addition and multiplication. Are you understanding me? At this time, I will call on a portion of the praise team as they will come and sing to the Lord. This will not be a long service. We're going to try to get you out of here rather quick. Um, as your pastor, firstly, has been in the council all week yeah. and also hosting our housewarming as well. Yesterday, we're very tired, but we still have to bring forth the word of God. Also, if you'd like to give to this, this ministry, you can give to the cash app, which is the other side GBWT, Albion, all capital letters. Let's receive a portion of our praise team at this time.
Senhor. church. We're here every Sunday at 11.15 a.m. Also, we're here generally every Tuesday for Bible study at 7.30 p.m. Our address is 402 Austin Avenue, the great city of Albion, Michigan, 49224. If you have Psalms 23, verse number 4, can you please stand with me? honoring of reading God's word. The book of Psalm chapter 23 verse 4 reads Yea, no, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Not death but the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, we give your name, thanks and praise. We thank you for being in the number one more time, we thank you for bringing us into the temple safe. We pray for all those individuals that are here, and obedient to your word, and not forsaken the gathering. Of saints. We pray for those that could not make it, that you bless them that's with us here virtually. You know our ins and outs, our issues, our problems, our hurdles, and all our struggles. We pray right now that you use me as a ready vessel to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let this word help, uplift, and motivate somebody to build a strong relationship with you. I pray that this is in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated in the house Amen. of the Lord. I'm going to read that Psalm 23, verse 4, one more time. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Today's sermon title is Walking in the Valley. Amen. Walking in the Valley. As we look at our text on today, we should know by now, those under the sound of my voice, those that pay attention to my teaching, the members of this great church, that King David is responsible for writing this particular psalm and many of the psalms that's in this book. King David was a very important individual concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ and carrying out the leadership of the children of Israel in such a time that can also reflect to now that was a group of individuals that simply did not want to be obedient to God. I know today, as we're focusing on walking in the valley, we are dealing with unusual times. And it seems like every day there is a new negative issue and we have to be careful that we don't let this world consume us concerning the life of sinners. Are you listening to me? This psalm was initially wrote for the pastors as giving instruction and guidance of what we should do concerning our leadership 
especially such as a time as now. And that's why I have such a profound respect. You don't have to like Bishop Combs. You don't have to worship Bishop Combs. But one thing I think he did correct, during the pandemic, he never closed his church doors. He never said, I don't want to baptize nobody because of COVID. I don't want to teach nobody in person because of COVID. We have messed up the leadership across the land in feeding into a doctrine of the world. And that's why I have to be careful when I watch the news because to me it seems like an indoctrination. They're not giving us facts and details. They're giving us their opinion concerning what they say that happened. I don't care about your opinion when I already have Amen. the best opinion Amen. that was ever yeah. created. Yeah. Am I the right church on today? Yeah. But this psalm is not just simply for pastors. It also can be for Christian, and I know a lot of people don't like to use the word Christian because just because you wear a cross, a suit, or a dress does not make you Christ-like. But this is also for a child of God concerning us how we should think. There's only one person that was given the authority in the scriptures to help us how to think. In fact, the Bible says, let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, also be in you. So this is saying that we need to think like Jesus. We need to walk like like Jesus. We need to talk like Jesus. And I understand that we're going to have hurdles Amen. in this world. I understand it's a roller coaster mm -hmm. life that we live in. You have ups and downs. But we need to understand that if Jesus Christ had to deal with trials and tribulation while on earth, mm -hmm. then you also will have to deal with with trials and tribulations. Am I in the right church on today? Yes. Dealing with our topic on today, walking in the valley, Pastor Williams, what is Amen. the definition of valley? It's a low area of land between hills or mountains, mm -hmm. typically with a river or a stream flowing through it. Pastor Williams, why is it important to understand this? Because most of us right now, we're in a low area. Mm -hmm. right. And if we're not in a low area, we can see things going on. We can see that man rather be lovers of himself than God. We can see things that we grew up in our house our mothers, our fathers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, mm -hmm. and even those who was privileges, <coughs> our great grandmothers, our great grandfathers that taught us this is wrong. Mm -hmm. Now the world is saying it's right. And not only is the world saying it's right, they are collectively coming together making laws to approve sin. Mm -hmm. Am I the right church on today? Yeah. We have to understand, church, that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. We are a royal priesthood. And if they're not willing to accept an invitation to salvation, an invitation to the church, they don't want to hear nothing you have to say concerning God. Maybe you need to separate yourself Amen. from these individuals because we have to come together. Everybody else is coming together in this world. Why can't the church come together in these last evil days? The Bible even tells us when there are two or three gathered together in my name. Mm -hmm. I will be there. 
Now, this was concerning judgment. When you break down the hermeneutics of the Bible, but the scripture still stands to be true. You don't need 400,000 people to be about God's business. You don't need a church that sees a thousand people to win souls for the kingdom. We know that we're in the valley. We know that we're going through hard times. We see the price at the gas pumps. Why y'all so quiet on this Sunday? We are in the grocery stores looking at inflation where me and my wife spent nearly $500 to host our house warming on food, which a couple years ago we might have got away with spending maybe 150. We know the times that we're living in, and we still turn to the world for answers. They don't have the answer. Amen. The same person that came to save the world, Jesus Christ, when he was coming in town on the donkey, they were screaming out, Hosanna to the highest. A few days later, they were screaming, crucify him. They don't want the truth. The Bible is the truth. I don't care what way you sway or what party you suggest to be acclaimed to, but the only party that matters is the party of Jesus Christ. That party will get into the kingdom of heaven. I'm not concerned to go to your banquet and get in your jacuzzi or even get in the bed with Satan himself. I'm concerned with my mansion when I get to heaven. Amen. Attending church every Sunday. Attending Bible study every Tuesday. Attending these councils. Attending these conventions. Helping the community. Baptizing souls. Praying for them at the altar to get the Holy Ghost. Paying my tithes and offering. Helping those in the community that need help. I will receive my reward if I can just make it through the valley. I feel like preaching on today. Walking through the valley as we see many problems. We're receiving persecutions. If we wear a mask, they got something to say. If we don't wear a mask, they got something to say. But I don't care what your preference is concerning the mask. My preference is still Jesus Christ. I can be tired in my body, afflicted in my body, but I'm on my father's business. I have a assignment to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So lives can be saved in this community, in this city, in the surrounding cities. We're praying right now that God shows his hand that people may be saved before it's too late. Amen. We don't know if tomorrow is promised for us. So while we have a chance right now, yeah. we got to make sure that we get it right. We need to repent for our sins because yeah. the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. We're seeing all types of crazy things happening amongst us. And if you think you was the first individual to be tempted by worldly substance after Jesus Christ came off a fast. When he was in the wilderness, the devil was the first one to meet him and offer him some things. So if you think that you got a late night booty call and you was the only one that was tempted by saying you need to go to the scriptures and correct yourself. Because if you married, and I ain't talking man with man or woman with woman, and I don't care if you preach up, turn off this virtual live, Go to somebody else's Facebook that give you these feel-good messages. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I know we're going through tough times. I know that we're walking in the valley. I know our bills is getting high. But I still depend on the goodness of Jesus Christ. I know the world is telling us this. And the world is telling us that. But when it comes from my instructions, when it comes from my guidelines, I read and follow these 66 books in the Bible. Why are you all so quiet on church today? I stand on this rock, just like Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I believe it still applies today. Upon this rock, God has built this church. And according to God, COVID-19 will not prevail against it. Why y'all so quiet and y'all today? No sickness 
Christ. We come against the rock that Jesus Christ has built. I know that there's sickness in the world. I know there's diseases in the world. But if you can have faith in Jesus Christ, somebody shout Jesus right now. If you can have faith in Jesus Christ, you can speak to that mountain. If you can have just a little faith, Pastor Wheels, what kind of faith are you talking about? If you can have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain and tell that mountain, get up out of my way. You can tell that bell water, why y'all so quiet? Jesus Christ, take 